Spain looks simple on a map. One country, one outline, one long history taught as a single story. That story is wrong. Three regions shared the same land, endured the same empires, and faced the same invasions. Yet they emerged with identities that do not line up in the way most people expect. One region kept a language no empire could replace. One became a crossroads where identity formed through contact, not isolation. One lost its original language entirely, yet preserved its prehistoric ancestry almost intact. Most explanations stop at culture. Some stop at politics. Almost all of them miss the evidence. Because identity does not survive in one way. It survives in different ways, depending on what a society protects. If identity is shaped by genetics, language, and continuity, which of these regions is truly distinct, and why? This is not opinion. It is measurable. Subscribe to Stone and Bone if you want history examined, not romanticized. Before comparing Basques, Catalans, and Galicians, one mistake has to be avoided. Difference is not a feeling. It is not pride, folklore, or modern labels. Difference is measurable. There are three ways populations diverge over time. First, genetics. Who mixed with whom? Whether newcomers replaced local populations or merged with them, whether ancestry shifted slowly or abruptly. Second, language. What survived conquest, what disappeared, and whether speech changed because people were replaced or because power changed hands. Third, continuity. Did a region experience repeated population turnover, or did people remain in place while cultures layered over them? Most discussions collapse these into one vague idea of identity. That guarantees confusion. Here, every region is judged by the same three standards. Only then does the word distinct have meaning. To understand why certain regions stand out, you first need to know what normal looks like in Iberia. The peninsula was never static. For tens of thousands of years, Iberia was home to hunter-gatherer groups adapted to its varied landscapes. Around 5,500 BCE, Neolithic farmers arrived from the eastern Mediterranean, bringing agriculture and permanently reshaping the population. Then came one of the most transformative events in European prehistory. Around 2000 BCE, steppe pastoralists spread into Iberia from the northeast. Their arrival replaced a large share of earlier ancestry and nearly all existing paternal lineages. Indo-European languages followed, laying the foundations for Celtic and later Romance speech and the layering did not stop there. Phoenician traders established coastal networks. Rome absorbed Iberia into an imperial system, spreading Latin and reorganizing society. After Rome's collapse came Germanic kingdoms, followed centuries later by North African expansion that left lasting genetic and cultural traces across much of the peninsula. In most regions, these waves accumulated. Genetically, Iberians became mixed. Linguistically, Latin replaced earlier languages almost everywhere. Culturally, local traditions survived only where geography or social structure allowed them to. This is the baseline. Repeated change. Repeated replacement. Repeated adaptation. Which is why what happens next cannot be dismissed as coincidence. What follows is not the rule in Iberia. It is the exception. The Basques are often described as Europe's oldest people. That phrase sounds powerful. It is also misleading. Genetically, the Basques are fully European. They were shaped by the same major prehistoric events as the rest of the continent. Neolithic farmers reached their valleys. Steppe ancestry arrived during the Bronze Age. These layers are visible in their DNA. What makes the Basques unusual is not origin. It is stability. Across much of Iberia, later migrations added significant new ancestry. In Basque regions, that later input remains unusually low. North African admixture, common elsewhere in Spain due to medieval history, is minimal here. Paternal lineages show strong local continuity, with variants rooted in the Western Pyrenees that trace back to the Bronze and Iron Ages. But genetics alone does not explain why the Basques stand apart. Language does. Euskara is not Indo-European. It does not descend from Latin, Celtic, or any known European language family. 
and unlike other pre-Indo-European languages, it did not vanish. It survived Roman rule, Christianization, feudal systems, and the formation of modern states. This creates a contradiction most people miss. The Basques mixed genetically like other Europeans. Their language did not. They were not isolated from history. Empires passed through their territory. What they resisted was linguistic replacement. Geography helped, but geography alone is not enough. Many isolated regions still lost their languages. The Basque case shows that cultural survival is not automatic. It is active. They are not Europe's outsiders. They are Europe's exception from within. If the Basques represent resistance to change, Catalonia represents movement. Catalonia sits where the Pyrenees open toward the Mediterranean. For thousands of years, this was not a boundary. It was a passage. Greek traders founded emperies along the coast. Rome followed, building Taraco and fortifying Barcino, embedding the region into imperial administration. Latin spread not only as a language, but as law, trade, and governance. After Rome's collapse, Catalonia was shaped as much by the north as by the south. Frankish control tied the region politically and culturally to what is now southern France. This mattered. Genetically, Catalans reflect this openness. Their ancestry combines deep Iberian roots with affinities to southern French and northern Italian populations. Small but consistent Mediterranean and North African inputs reflect centuries of contact rather than large-scale replacement. Language followed the same pattern. Catalan evolved from vulgar Latin, but not in isolation. Occitan influence and Frankish administration pulled it away from Castilian Spanish early. By the medieval period, Catalan was already standardized and later spread along maritime routes to Valencia, the Balearic Islands, and beyond. Catalonia did not preserve identity by staying unchanged. It preserved identity by managing change. Institutions provided continuity where ancestry remained fluid. Identity here endured because it organized itself around power. Galicia occupies the far northwestern edge of Iberia, facing the Atlantic rather than the continent. Mountains limited overland movement. The ocean connected Galicia to a wider Atlantic world stretching toward Brittany and the British Isles. Genetically, Galicia shows some of the strongest continuity in Iberia. Genome-wide studies consistently place Galicians within an Atlantic cluster, closer to Western European coastal populations than to Southern or Eastern Iberians. Later, admixture exists, but it is limited and often linked to trade rather than demographic replacement. Before Roman conquest, the region was inhabited by Celtic-speaking groups known as the Galiaci. They built fortified hill settlements, or castros, across the landscape. These were permanent communities tied to local territory. Roman rule changed the surface, not the foundation. Latin replaced Celtic languages, but the population remained largely intact. Even after Rome's collapse, the Suebi kingdom preserved regional cohesion without triggering major genetic turnover. This produces one of the clearest lessons in European history. Galicia lost its original language. It did not lose its people. Celtic identity survived through continuity of settlement, landscape, and ancestry. Culture adapted. DNA endured. Galicia is the mirror image of the Basque case. When the same standards are applied side by side, the differences stop being abstract. They become structural. The Basques show the strongest combination of genetic continuity and linguistic survival in Western Europe. Catalonia shows the highest level of interaction, with identity preserved through institutions rather than ancestry. Galicia shows deep genetic continuity paired with linguistic replacement. None of these paths are accidents. Geography shaped opportunity. Power shaped language. Choice shaped what endured. Together, they expose a flaw in how identity is usually explained. There is a common assumption that ancestry, language, and identity always travel together. Iberia proves they do not. Languages can disappear while populations remain. Genetic continuity can survive cultural change. Political identities can form long after ancestry is already fixed. Basques show language surviving ancestry change. 
Galicians show ancestry surviving language loss. Catalans show institutions anchoring identity despite fluidity. What survives is never random. It reflects what communities defend and organize around. Iberia is often described as a blend of peoples. That description misses the point. A melting pot implies flattening. Iberia never flattened. Layers accumulated without fully replacing what came before. In some regions, language endured. In others, ancestry did. In others, institutions carried continuity where neither genetics nor speech remained fixed. Unity came late. Diversity is ancient. Spain is not unified because its regions share the same past. It is unified because different pasts learn to coexist. The Basques preserved memory through language. The Catalans built continuity through structure. The Galicians carried the Atlantic past forward through people rather than words. DNA remembers movement. Language remembers power. Culture remembers